Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the knowledge coalescing operator. These two little question marks that you may have seen in JavaScript. So let's get started. So this small project that I'm going to be working on is a continuation of the one we worked on last week. You can find it in one of the corners, it's called optional chaining. And the reason why they're together, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna use knowledge coalescing and optional chaining together. Now, let's see how knowledge coalescing works. Let's say we have a variable, so value, and we're gonna give it a knowledge value. I'm gonna talk about this in a second. Now I'm gonna console log value, but that's gonna give us over here undefined. Let's say instead of undefined, I want to show something else. I want to show, for example, an empty string like this. We run it again and we get an empty string. This is not very clear here, but we can say we want a default to zero and I reload and now we get zero, which is great. So how does knowledge coalescing works? If the value, this is the knowledge coalescing operator, it's two question marks. You have the value or expression on its left side and then you have the value or expression on its right side. If the value on its left side is knowledge, so that means if it's null or undefined, only one of these two values defined, then we're gonna proceed and run the right side of the expression, which is why we get zero over here. So let's take a look. If I give this a value of null, this is still a knowledge value, so we're still gonna see zero. But if I give it any other value, for example, 42, then look what's gonna happen. We're gonna see 42. This is where it's gonna short circuit and it's gonna completely forget about everything on the right side of the knowledge coalescing operator. So only two values, which are knowledge, which are called knowledge values. So null and undefined. If you get one of these two, then the right side will run. Otherwise it will just short circuit and it won't run the expression on the right side. That's pretty much what knowledge coalescing is about. I'm just gonna show you some more useful use cases now. But first to stress on the fact that this would only run the right side of the operator if this is knowledge. Take a look at take a look what happens if you pass in zero and let's say this would be not applicable. We will get zero over here because zero is not a knowledge value. So it's really only just one of the two values, null or undefined. Now this may not seem very useful, but let's see how we can apply this uh, in a combination with optional chaining. So I'm gonna go back and take the code from the previous video. If you haven't seen this video before, um, make sure to check it out so that the whole code makes sense. But we basically have two API endpoints, user one, which does return the data, and then user two didn't really have a complete JSON, so it doesn't, it doesn't return all the data, and we were getting a bunch of undefined. So this is why you see parent ID here and nothing because that's undefined. But we talked about making it, but we talked about improving it and uh, making it look a little bit more user friendly. So instead of, so yeah, instead of having an empty parent ID over here, we're gonna go ahead and say data.parent and then optional chaining ID. But if this whole thing returns a knowledge value, undefined or null, then I'm gonna fall back to n slash a. Reload the page and it works for user two. Let's do the same over here, n slash a, reload, and it works. If you go back to user one, then we will see the correct IDs. So why? Because data.parent.id with optional chaining is gonna return a proper value like 132. So then we're gonna short circuit and skip running the right side of the operator. So parent ID is gonna be data.parent.id. Now in the other event where user two doesn't have this parent and then the dot ID, what's gonna happen here is that this is gonna return undefined because this is what optional chaining does. You may have seen, you, as explained in the previous video, data.parent.id, because the dot .parent doesn't exist, then it's gonna short circuit and return undefined. So then you have undefined and then knowledge coalescing n slash a, and this is why you end up seeing n slash a on the screen over here. Quick reminder, if you wanna learn JavaScript in a modern way, then check out my course, learnjavascript.online. You solve challenges interactively in the browser, you take notes, and it's just a one app that contains everything. And uh, I've also, I also have the same for React. If you're looking to learn React, you can also do that over here. At the end of the course, you end up building 
this supermarket application in um, like a long project that you build step by step. So see this the cart, you can add a couple of things. And it also comes with a Stripe integration. So if I enter my email over here, it's gonna redirect me to Stripe where I pay. Please don't copy my credit card. Pay and then it works and it takes you back to the app. The courses will be linked down below. Now let's take a look at another useful scenario where you can use both optional chaining and knowledge coalescing, but not necessarily to default to n slash a, but to default to something more meaningful. So let's say my API returns a list of users. This is one of the users. They have an ID. All of them have an ID, but only those who have subscribed have a payments object. And then you can see the value of the payment over there. But as you can see, the user number three does not have a payment. And let's say you're asked to do the sum. Um, I'm going to do the sum in uh, two, two ways, one of the first time with for each and the next time with reduce. So let's start, so let's start with the sum equals zero. And then we loop over every user, we get one user. And then we can also log the user just to visualize it. And you see we get the users one by one. Now, how do I get the payment value? We can do dot payments dot value, but as you can expect, the last one is going to break. And now we can use uh, optional chaining and that's going to work. We get four, 40, 30 undefined. And let's calculate the sum. Now we can do sum plus equals and then user dot payments and then optional chaining value because we don't want it to break. And then at the end, the sum is and then sum and we will get not a number. The reason why we get not a number because one of the payments doesn't exist. So this is undefined. And if you take any number and you add undefined to it, you will get not a number. This is where you can use knowledge coalescing brilliantly to default to zero. And this is going to fix your sum. So yeah, this is a common use case for knowledge coalescing. Now let's do the same, but this time I'm going to use reduced equals we will reduce the users. I should probably have a video about reduce in the future. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to have a video about reduce. So users dot reduce. And instead of going with uh, accumulator, I always like to go with total and then current. I think it's just much clearer. Uh, because it's a sum, the initial value will be zero. Then over here, we're going to return the total plus the current is now the user. So if you want, you can rename this to user and then user dot payments question mark dot value and then we default to zero because again if you don't default to zero we will get undefined uh, not a number but here we default to zero and it still doesn't work that's because of the priority of uh, this knowledge coalescing it's actually less than the plus sign and this is where you have to have parentheses to make it work I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my courses. They're linked below and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.